everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Wendy Cellist and um, if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe right now and also click that little bell button so that you'll be notified of future videos. And of course, I'm on other socials as well, on Instagram and Facebook, Cellist Wendy Law. Today we're going to talk about 10 tips that can help you to practice efficiently and that you improve really, really fast. This and applies to cellists or any other instrumentalists. Uh, because these tips really is universal. Tip number one, set realistic goals. I actually make daily, weekly, and monthly goals because otherwise you just kind of wander, you're playing your bar. You're like, I hope that it somehow gets better. No, you have to make specific goals. Like today I'm gonna work on intonation, tomorrow I'm gonna work on the rhythm, the day after that I'm gonna work on both, and the day after that I might focus on the phrasing. You know, you have to make these goals so that you can really strive towards them. And actually for me, I keep a bullet journal, which I can show you another time if you like. I, I make these journals so that I could keep track of what I've improved on, what I need to work on, what I'm planning on working on, what my goals are. So those are very, very important. Sometimes I try out that method, the Pomodoro method, I think it's called, where you like practice, you set your timer for 25 minutes and then you take a little bit of a break. The point is that in that short burst of time that you're supposed to be focused, you can focus because I know a lot of times when you have like five hours to work on something or to practice, you're like, oh yeah, I've, all day I've got five hours. So I'll just like play a little bit. I'll take, you know, 20 minutes of rest. And then when I feel like it, I'll play again. Like that happens. And that's not just for practicing, for any sort of work. So it's good to have bursts of energy where you focus on something's very specific. And this is where your goal comes in, let's say like, in the next 25 minutes, I'm just gonna work on the first page of this concerto and let's see how much I get done. Push that little timer and then boom, 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 you go. So that's how I do it sometimes. And that makes practicing so efficient when you have a goal, you have a set time limit, then you get it done. Tip number three, practice away from your instrument. Yes, that means score studying uh, and looking at the score. And you can do that like when you're traveling on the airplane, on train, on the subway, on the bus, whatever you're doing, when you have some free time in between breaks, you take out your music and you kind of look at some dynamic things, uh, tempo, um, phrasing, and if you're doing chamber music, you certainly need to learn the other people's parts and see how your part fits into the quartet or the trio or whatever and really learn what they're doing. So it's really important to study scores. You know, playing the cello and practicing the cello is something that's very physical. And you can learn a lot just by studying the score and sometimes even listening if it's helpful. Sometimes I know some people don't want to listen to a piece of music that they're working on. But for me, I don't think that's true. I don't think, I mean, at least at this time in my career, I can listen to many different recordings and um, I would be inspired. I may take some ideas, but I usually already have a conception of what I want to do in a piece of music. But there's always something to be learned when you listen to other people's music. So you might want to try that as well. So practice away from your instrument. Number four, that kind of goes with number three, being away from your instrument. It's actually sing through some of your pieces because if you can sing it, you can play it because what happens a lot of times is when we are like kind of stuck with playing, you know, and we're, you know, basically caught in the physics of playing. Like how I'm gonna shift or whatever, you know, I'm just making it up. And and you're caught in the middle of it not thinking about the phrasing, you're not thinking about how you want that piece to go. And when you sing it naturally, you automatically I feel like your body, your mind, your soul kind of knows how a piece wants to go, how a phrase wants to go. And then you kind of have your playing match, your singing and what you have in your mind. And you can work out a lot of stuff just singing through pieces. I guarantee you that will save you a lot of time. Number five, this may be obvious, but a lot of pieces, not all pieces, I, I wouldn't say all pieces, but certainly a lot of pieces, you can really benefit a lot by using the metronome because I remember working on a brand new piece that was written for me and my ensemble classical jam and it's very technical and I practiced it and I thought I was very metronomical but then when I turned on the metronome I was like oh my gosh this whole part I thought I was in tempo is actually way too slow I just didn't know 
So I have a philosophy now about, especially with new pieces that I'm working on, start right away with the metronome so that you know where you are in terms of like speed. And, and then afterwards, then you can be, that can be taken away and then you can do it freely. But then you still have the steady rhythm and beats in your head. So I think it's really important when you first learn a piece, especially, Start with the metronome and then you can be free. Number six, this is another obvious one, but um, is to practice with the tuner. And I would add that not just any pieces, especially when you are doing your scales, because if you can do it with your scales, you can hear, you can listen for the intonation, then it becomes even easier as you're working on pieces. And really your warm ups, your scales at the beginning of each practice really sets up your entire practice. If you can listen very carefully um, during the beginning of your practice to your intonation and tune with a tuner on the more technical things on warm ups and also scales, then the rest of your practice is set up for success already because you're already listening for the intonation. So. Tuner, 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 very important. Number seven, record yourself. You know what's great now? You know, like when I was growing up, it was more difficult to record yourself because you have to get the recorder somewhere and you have to find a tape or whatever. That's the era I grew up in. Now you just turn on the phone and boom, 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 you get a really good quality recording. The recording does not lie. So you can really listen from an objective person, you know, kind of outside and you can hear some of the things that you're doing well and some of the things that needs more work. So instead of just playing through a piece a million and a half times and then hoping that it will somehow get better, you play a few times until you're confident enough and then record yourself, listen back, and you realize, oh, okay, these are the places I need to work on. Actually, this leads me to tip number eight, which is to isolate the more difficult passages. So after you've listened back or even before you do, sometimes you just know what those challenging passages are. Don't play through the entire piece five times, ten times. No, target those places. Maybe those places need the metronome. Target them, or tuner for that matter. Target them, practice many times until you're comfortable. Then go back a little bit before the passage starts and, and also a little bit after where it ends. Play through that bigger passage a few more times until you're comfortable and isolate problems. If there is a shifting problem, just work on the shifts. If it's an intonation problem in that particular spot, work on an intonation. If it's like a bow thing where it's not coordinated, work on that. Whatever your issue is, work on that issue first and foremost, then bring everything together. Number nine, now I see a lot of people doing this, which is again, I say that people play through stuff like a million and a half times, hoping that it'll get better. Doesn't work like that. Actually, a majority of your practice should be slow. When I say slow, I mean a variant of speed. So when you're learning a new piece of music, maybe start like super slow or just slow enough so that you, your body, your fingers, your hands, your arms, your mind can really absorb the motions to, to have that muscle memory, so to speak. So start slow and then speed up more and more and then of course eventually you have to play in tempo but the majority of your practice you want your body to learn the mechanics of the physicality of playing certain passages certain parts so playing fast is not going to help your body to learn it so it's it can't be more important more and be stressed more to spend a majority of your time practicing slow and naturally when you're ready your body will just want to play it fast so you don't need to force it to play fast initially. Number 10, and I've mentioned this like a million times in all my videos, but I can't stress this enough. Always start with a warm up and scales because that sets up your entire practice. That gives you an opportunity so that your body is warm, your body is warmed up, your body knows what to do to produce a sound you want. If you just go into it, you can hurt yourself, first of all, and then your practice becomes less efficient because your body is not ready. It's really important to even spend, like let's say you only have like an hour to practice or half an hour even, spend two minutes to five minutes to just do one scale. That in itself will save you rest of time for the rest of the practice. I guarantee that's the truth. 
So I hope that this is helpful. Let me know if you have any other tips for practicing efficiently down in the comments below. And if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. And if you want to support me, you can go to patreon.com slash wendylaw and become a patron. There are different perks. I will put the links down below. And of course, you can further support me by watching my visual album and purchasing my album on my website, wendylaw.com. And it has some really, really great music like All Passion and Latin and uh, Spanish and Brazilian, etc. Portuguese songs, everything. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye!